In this first lesson for algebraic expressions grade 10, we are going to have a look at the real number system. Even though at school level we only work with the real number system, you should also be able to identify non-real numbers. So let's have a look at non-real numbers. They are formed when there's a negative value inside any even root. The most well-known one will be in a normal square root, but then of course the negative value can be in a fourth root, a sixth root, or any type of even root. Next, let's focus on the real numbers. Firstly, real numbers are divided into either rational or irrational numbers. A rational number is defined as a number that can be written in the form a over b, with b not equal to zero. When it does happen that the denominator of a fraction is zero, this number is not classified under the real or non-real number system. When this happens and the denominator is zero, we call it undefined. Because a rational number is a number that can be written in the form a over b, it includes all normal fractions. Finite decimals, recurring decimals, as well as integers, can all be rewritten in the form a over b and are therefore also rational numbers. Irrational numbers are all the infinite non-recurring decimals. The easiest irrational number to identify are when you have a square root of a value that is not a perfect square number. That is why it is useful to make sure that you know all the perfect square numbers. The square root of any number that is not a perfect square will then be an irrational number. As an example, the square root of 10 will be an irrational number. Back with real numbers, we can now divide our integers up into negative integers and whole numbers. And then whole numbers can be divided up into zero and natural numbers. It is important to also know the symbol that is used for each of these numbers. When classifying values, you will start at the top and work your way down. Firstly, you will have to decide whether it's a real or a non-real number. Let's look at an example of square root 5. Firstly, this is a positive value inside a square root and therefore it is a real number. This 5 is not a perfect square and that means it will be an irrational number. So, square root 5 is a real irrational number. Next, let's also have a look at the value 9. 9 is definitely a real number. It can also be written in fraction form and therefore is a rational number. Next, it can also be identified as an integer. And it also forms part of the whole numbers. And lastly, it is also a natural number. Let's go and have a look at a few applications of the theory. Example 1. Determine whether the following numbers are rational or irrational numbers. Minus 3 is definitely a rational number. In question B, we have the numbers 3, 2, 1 that repeats itself and therefore this is a recurring decimal and that will be classified as a rational number. 0 is also a rational number. In question D, we have the square root of two perfect square numbers on the inside. And because they are both perfect square numbers, we can simplify this to a value of 3 over 5. This means that this is also a rational number. In question E, we have the square root of a value that is not a perfect square number and therefore this will be an irrational number. In F, we have a minus inside a root, but because it's an uneven or odd root, this is still a real number. The cube root of minus 8 is minus 2, 
and therefore this is a rational number. In G we have pi plus 3 and we know that pi is an infinite decimal and if we add another 3 it stays an infinite decimal and therefore this is an irrational number. Example 2. Between which two consecutive integers does the irrational number square root 14 lie? Here we have a square root that on the inside has a value that is not a perfect square number. This means we need to determine between which two perfect square numbers the value 14 actually lies. So I'm going to start off saying that the value 14 definitely lies in between the two perfect square numbers 9 and 16. Therefore, the square root of 14 will lie in between the square root of 9 and the square root of 16. And now I can determine the square root of 9 and the square root of 16 because I specifically chose perfect square numbers and therefore I know that the square root of 14 lies in between the two integers 3 and 4.